They're playing it cool, putting a face on for themselves, putting a face on for others, instead of getting honest and candid about how it really is affecting them. If more people would just be honest, we'd have people jumping ship left and right as if their life depended on it. And guess what? Quite frankly, a lot of people's lives do. Hey, it's Carly Burr and welcome back to Taking Life Offline. Today, we are going to get into a specific example about the impact that social media can have. And some of you might sit there thinking, social media, gosh, it really isn't that big of a deal. And for some people, you're right. Social media isn't that big of a deal. But for a lot of people out there, social media is a serious problem. Social media is a very big deal. So after listening to today's episode, try and tell me that social media still isn't that big of a deal. And in order to set the stage for this topic, I'll be sharing an email I received a couple of weeks back that some of you will probably find relatable and others will find incredibly inspiring because of the total 180 that she's been able to create within her life. So I'm going to share Olivia's email and I hope that whoever needs to hear this, hears this and realizes that you are not alone. She said, Hi Carly, I just wanted to personally thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you've done and for honoring God's call in your life. Your podcast and YouTube channel have been such a blessing and a beautiful gift in my life. I could go on and on about what it has done for me, but I will try my very best to keep it short and to the point. I subscribed some time ago and was deeply desiring to go offline for a long time, but to no avail would inevitably fail to follow through every single time. For me, social media became a terrible addiction, like a drug that I just couldn't bring myself to stop no matter how terrible it made me feel, no matter how hard I tried. My depression was so bad because of my unhealthy relationship with social media that I was admitted a few years ago into a hospital for suicidal thoughts. It's embarrassing to admit, but it was absolutely destroying every area of my life. After having my second daughter almost three years ago, I decided to make changes one small step at a time. I became more interested in pursuing offline hobbies such as running and reading and also placed my attention and my energy into my family and real life connections. All of this combined with following your videos made my addiction decrease more and more. Today is the first day to the start of a new year, 2024. I am starting a new job tomorrow. My marriage is thriving. My relationship with my two daughters is thriving. My other personal relationships are strong and I have a wonderful circle of real life friends and genuine connections. It didn't all happen overnight. It took time for me to be here today and I owe it all to God for leading me to your podcast. Because of you, your words, encouragement, real talk and advice, I have been able to put your videos into practice over the course of this last year and of yesterday, all of my social media has been permanently deleted as a New Year's Eve gift to myself. I am no longer addicted and I'm now able to follow through successfully and it's all because of what your channel has done in my life. I will continue tuning in every week to your podcast and look forward to continuing this journey offline in 2024. Thank you again, Carly, and happy new year. I'm so grateful that Olivia reached out and shared her story with me and that she so graciously allowed me to share it with you. I'm also so incredibly grateful because it's just helping me, helping reaffirm me that what I'm doing is working, that the impact that I'm trying to have that it is making a difference in the lives of the people who need it. I'm so proud of her and for how far she has come, for the work that she has put in, one small step at a time, just like she says, and for the transformation that her life has been able to have through doing so. She has taken back her life and I'm so excited to see what continues to lie ahead for her as she lives her life offline. Maybe you yourself can relate to Olivia. Maybe social media has become a terrible addiction that's affected many or all areas of your life. And if so, I hope that hearing her story today gives you some hope and that you can draw inspiration from her story for you to get your own journey started, to start taking action today. That there is so much hope and so much light for you on the other side of this. Her story is not the first that I've heard and it definitely will not be the last. The side effects, the impact that social media can have is no joke. Social media is ruining lives. It's ruining lives in extreme ways. It's ruining lives in smaller ways. It's either very noticeable or it's doing it sneakily and very slowly. But nonetheless, it is ruining lives. Enough lives that it does need to be 
addressed. It's interesting because when you do just simple research on social media addiction, a lot of what you find relates to teens and adolescents, and rightfully so. I mean, they are the future, they are still developing, they are so incredibly important, we need to protect them and educate them. So, rightfully so, a lot of those types of articles come up. But the reality is, social media affects adults just as well. The impact social media has is really big because on one side, it provides a form of connection. It provides a way for you to connect with like-minded people. It provides a way for you to express your creativity. But on the other side, it is a source of comparison. It's a source of anxiety. It's a source of depression. It's a source of getting distracted from the things that actually matter. It's a source of addiction and loneliness and the list, it just goes on. While most of us are wildly aware of the positive and the negative side effects of social media, it's time to get serious. It's time to get honest. It's time to get real about how social media is affecting you personally, what impact it has on you specifically in your life. It's worth taking some time to sit down and write, to really get an understanding of how social media is impacting you, to understand your tendencies, to understand your behaviors, to understand the feelings that you have while using or after using social media. It's important to be able to get super honest and understand these impacts that it's having on you. If social media has any sort of negative impact on you, be it something really big or something really small, address it now. Do not wait until it becomes worse and don't settle for where it is now if it could be a lot better. Okay, I wanted to go back to Olivia's email because there were a couple things I did want to point out and take note of, of how she's able to get herself to the side, to the other side of this destructive addiction. She said, I decided to make changes one small step at a time. I became more interested in pursuing offline hobbies such as running and reading and also placed my attention and my energy into my family and real life connections. All of this combined with following your videos made my addiction decrease more and more. In short, she took action. She started doing, literally moving her body and engaging her mind and very intentionally directing her attention toward the things that matter. Then for the cherry on top, she stayed inspired. She stayed encouraged to continue moving forward in this sort of action. And little by little, over time, her addiction decreased more and more. It's amazing and absolutely a testament to everything that I've been talking about in my videos and the message that I'm trying to get across and the actions I'm trying to help you take to make these positive changes. You guys, the formula is simple. It's straightforward. You see the need for change, call it out. You take new actions. You create connections in your real life and you stay inspired. That is what it takes. And yes, I know it's so much easier said than done, but nonetheless, it is so doable. It's interesting because where we direct our time, what we spend our thoughts doing becomes so much of our lives and so much of who we are. So with how much time we're spending on social media and whatever we're doing while we're there, of course, it's going to have some sort of impact on our life. And I'm going to be straight up and say, I think most people are downplaying the effects that social media has on them. They're playing it cool, putting a face on for themselves, putting a face on for others, instead of getting honest and candid about how it really is affecting them. If more people would just be honest, we'd have people jumping ship left and right as if their life depended on it. And guess what? Quite frankly, a lot of people's lives do. The effects of social media are no joke. This is your life. This is your time. This is your well-being. Don't waste another day just willingly giving up your time, giving up your life. It's time to take back your life through going offline, through walking this path less traveled. And I'll tell you what, it will be one of the best things you've ever done for yourself and for your life. And I say that confidently and surely because I lived that and I've lived that for nearly nine years now. Now let's get into our action step for today. I challenge you to sit down with a pen and piece of paper and make a T-chart with a line down the middle, the line like this, on one side of the top, right, positive, one side, right, negative. And I want you to clearly identify the positive and the negative 
effects that social media has on you. A way to help you identify these is by paying attention to how you feel and behaviors that you have around social media. So when you're getting on the platform, taking notes of how you're feeling, and when you're leaving, taking note of how you're feeling as well, or reasoning why you're going there or why you're getting off. Get to know the way that you use social media and you'll be able to identify the positive and the negative impact that it's having on you and your life. After doing this, if the positives end up outweighing the negatives, then you did this wrong. So start over again. <laughs> Just kidding. But really I want you to take the positives and the negatives and look at the level of impact that each of those things are having on you because the magnitude of each positive and each negative is going to be affecting you at a different level at a different rate than the next. It's not going to be equal across the board. All right. So once you finish that, and I'm feeling like this is like the longest action step of the day <laughs> or of all episodes that I've ever done. But once you finish that, I guess this is not over yet. <laughs> I want you to think on this chart and specifically think on the positives because I want you to brainstorm how you could fulfill these things, how you could take care of these positive impacts in your real life offline. I know that it's possible to do that. I am far from the only one to ever do this and the number is continuing to grow each day. And maybe you will be next. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I wanted to say one last thank you to Olivia for allowing me to share your story here on the podcast. I know that your story will resonate with and inspire so many people. Thank you so much for watching. If you have a friend who might really benefit from hearing this episode, then please share it with them. That way we can help more people find us on this path less traveled. I appreciate you so very much. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will catch you next Monday.